Hey there, and welcome back to the channel. Have you booked a cruise lately or thinking about booking a cruise and now being asked dining options? Or are you overwhelmed with all the questions about scheduled dining, my time dining, free dining, reservation dining? What is this and what the heck does all of this mean? Well, don't worry, I'm going to break it all down for you. So let's get started. Whether you're a first time cruiser or you're a seasoned sailor, understanding the dining options can help you have a better time on the cruise and make your vacation even more enjoyable. First up, let's talk about the different options that are available to you in the main dining room. Most cruise lines offer a variety of preferences to help with your dining experience. Typically, there's two main types of dining options that you'll encounter on a majority of most cruise lines. Most have different names, but they're all very similar concepts. And those are scheduled dining and my time dining, or also known as free dining, your time dining, anytime dining. There's a lot of different names for this particular type of dining. Now there is a third option, but it goes more with the my time dining or anytime dining, and that is reserved dining. Now this is the anytime dining, but it allows you to make a reservation for a specific time, which helps cut down on waiting in line. So let's break these down a bit to help you better understand what they are and even talk a little bit about the pros and cons of each. And then I'll mention at the end, which one may be the best option for you. So first up, let's talk about scheduled dining or traditional dining. This dining option is pretty straightforward. What this is, it allows guests to have a specific dining time that they are to be at the main dining room. Now this arrangement ensures guests a structured and consistent dining experience. This allows guests to dine at the same time and with the same table companions with the same servers each evening. So here are a few of the key aspects of this. Now, I can't say that these are pros and cons because this is really going to depend on your own personal preference, so you have to decide. So one of the aspects is it has, like I said, a fixed dining time. Now, typically this is broke into two different areas. They call it early dining and late dining. Now your early dining experience is typically between, depending on the cruise line, between five and 6.30ish, somewhere in there. And your late dining can be anywhere from 7.30 up until about nine o'clock. So if you like any of those time frames that you wanna eat dinner every evening, then this could be for you. So make sure that you check with the cruise line that you're planning on taking and the itinerary that you choose to make sure that you know what times that you're looking at to be considered early dining and late dining. Another benefit of this too is that you are assigned the same table every night of the cruise. This does allow for you to have the same wait staff. And what's neat about that is the wait staff gets to know you and your personal preferences. I like to have an iced tea every night with my dinner. The waiters and wait staff gets to know that. And when I sit down, they immediately brought me an iced tea every single night. Now, another thing is the people that you eat with. Now, when you're signing up, when you pick your dining time, dining experience, you can choose to eat with other people or you can be with just your party or by yourself. If you choose to eat with others, this is a great way to meet new people, make some friends, and you will be with that party, that group, every single night. Or like I said, if you don't wanna meet new people and you just wanna eat by yourself and be with your own party, you have that option too. You just need to make sure that you click that option when signing up for your dining preferences. So another thing with the scheduled dining or just eating in the dining room in general is the dress code. With this, you will have what they consider casual, smart casual, and formal nights. Basically, when you go to the dining room, you can come in most anything but your swimwear and stuff like that. Now, some cruise lines do say no shorts. I have started to see a lot of cruise lines getting relaxed or more lax in this aspect, allowing shorts and t-shirts and stuff into the main dining area. I think now that most of what I see getting enforced is when people show up looking like they're about to go play a basketball game, you know, with the gym shorts, cut off shirts or whatever, that's still a no-no. But if you have some, you know, Bermuda shorts and some nice shoes, they typically frown on flip-flops for guys, sorry. 
but you might be able to get by with that. I would just throw in some long pants, uh, whether it's khakis or something like that, just to make sure that way if you go to dinner and they say, no, you can't come in, you at least have something to go change into that you can wear throughout the rest of the cruise. So another good aspect of this, well, that we liked, I mentioned just a minute ago, and that is the service. Having the same wait staff every night, getting to know you. And for my kids, this was one of their favorite things is having the wait staff get to know them, just interacting with them, knowing their name, especially when they were younger. They really thought that was the neatest thing that they could come in and the wait staff remembered who they were. But when it comes to the scheduled dining, there is one major drawback that is pretty much across most all cruise lines. And that is if you miss your dining time, you can't get into the main dining room. If you have an early dining, say five o'clock, and you don't make it back in time for an excursion and you wanna eat the main dining room, unfortunately, you cannot go down to the My Time dining area, get in line and get a table. Now, this is the policy of the cruise lines and I've talked to several on this. However, is there a chance that you could get in? Yeah, there is a chance. I've seen it. I've been on cruises where someone with a scheduled dining time was able, and more than once because I was one of them, was able to get in to the my time dining area when you miss your scheduled dining time how does that work well if you miss it you can always go up to the host that is at the my time dining area and just ask them if they can accommodate you if you're nice they're not very busy they may let you in but there's also a chance they're going to say no I've seen that happen as well. People go up, they ask, and they say, I'm sorry, this is our policy, and they will not let them in. So if this is you, and you miss your dining time, what do you do? They won't let you in. Well, don't worry. You can still eat, you're not gonna starve. You do have a couple options. One is, you can go to the buffet. You know, that has a variety of different cuisines. It's a great place. You can go there for the evening, and you don't have to worry about reservations or anything like that. Another option is you can go try some of the included restaurants around the ship. They may have some smaller eateries, different things that you can do. You can try room service, or you can take a chance and go try your luck at getting into a specialty restaurant. So now let's talk about my time dining. Also known as free dining, your time dining, anytime dining. It's all the same concept, just different cruise lines use different names. What this concept is, is this allows passengers to show up to the main dining room anytime they want, within the hours of operation, of course. So instead of having a set dining time that you have to be there, you can go get ready and show up anytime that you would like. Now, each cruise line, like I mentioned, calls it a different name. Even though this is a similar uh, idea across all cruise lines, some of them do operate a little bit different when it comes to the My Time Dining or the free dining. So make sure whichever cruise line that you're taking that you understand exactly how theirs works. Now I'm going to give you an overview, just a general perspective of how this works. Most of them all work in this general way with the anytime dining when you show up you will have to wait in line depending on the time of day if this is a peak dining time or if it's you know early in the evening then you may not have such a long line but you may have to wait just a little while or you may have to wait a long time that's the gamble that you take with the anytime dining also if you're one of those people that enjoy uh setting with others to have a conversation then you will be with somebody different every single night. But you can also choose to just be with you. Now, if you choose to only be with you, if there's only a couple of you, you may wait a little bit longer than those that are willing to set with other groups. So what are some of the pros and cons? And just like the scheduled dining, I'm just gonna list these together because, and once again, depending on your preference, what I consider a pro might be a con to you. I'm just gonna tell you what you're gonna experience and you can decide whether or not it's a pro or a con based on your own preference. One of them is flexible dining hours. Like I mentioned earlier, you can just kind of show up whenever you want during normal operation. Now this allows for more flexibility 
It allows for more freedom. So if you have something that you want to do, maybe there's a show that pops up or an activity, you don't have to worry about rushing back, getting ready to get to your dining on time. You just come whenever you're ready to do it. Another pro or con that I mentioned was you don't have the same table companion or staff every night. Also, your wait staff will be different, so you don't have that experience of the wait staff getting to know you personally and learning your preferences. If eating with others every night, somebody different doesn't bother you, or if you prefer to eat by yourself and having different wait staff doesn't bother you, then you might be fine. The only other major drawback that I see with this type of dining is the waiting in line. Now, I've seen it before when we've been on cruises when the line was long and we stood there for, I think it was close to 45 minutes before we finally got a table. And other times we've walked right in and there hasn't been anybody. So it's going to depend on the peak dining times. One of the biggest things I see is if you have a late day in port. So if you're staying out a little bit later, typically if you go to dinner a little earlier, you're gonna walk right in. Uh, if you're on sea days, then if it's around dinner time, the line's gonna start filling up pretty quick, people wanting in the main dining room. That is just gonna be a gamble that you're gonna to have to take if you want that type of dining option. So which one of these are the best dining option for you? Well, if you like the consistency, if you like having a set dining time, regardless if there's a chance that you may miss your dining time, then I would go with the scheduled dining. Now, if you don't mind having a different staff every night and be like going to a local restaurant, don't mind setting with somebody different every night if you choose to do that, then I would personally go with the my time or anytime dining option. Now, what about waiting in line? I said that that was horrible, right? So why would I choose that? Well, here's a trick for you. If you choose the my time dining option, you have another option and that is to make a reservation. So this is reserved dining time. You can only do this with the my time dining or your time dining or any time dining or free dining, whatever that is. You can only do it with that. And the way that works is when you reserve your dining time, you can show up to that. Now here's the kicker. What if you miss that dining time? No worries, because you already have the my time dining, any time dining, free dining. Because you already have that, then you can go get in that line and just wait. But by doing a reservation, then you can skip the long line and just go straight up to the front. Typically they'll have two lines, the line with reservation and those without reservation. So you can go get in this line. Typically they're a whole lot shorter and you can get in a whole lot faster. Now I did mention specialty restaurants a while ago. So I wanted to take just a moment to explain to you about how this works. I know this is mainly about the main dining room, but I felt that this was something very important to kind of touch on just for a second. When it comes to specialty dining, this is a way to experience some great cuisine and have a different dining experience while on your cruise. The problem is on many cruise lines, the specialty restaurants are often an additional charge. A couple of cruise lines I know that do include theirs, uh, Virgin Cruise Line, Disney Cruise Line, those include all their specialty restaurants. They may have some extra specialty restaurant things that you have to pay for, but their primary restaurants are all included in the cost. Now, here's the thing I wanted to talk about. Whether they're included or not, you're still going to need a reservation for these. Now, some cruise lines will start letting you make reservations weeks in advance of the cruise, while others are 24 hours before the cruise, and some are even the day of the cruise when you get on the ship. So you need to check with your cruise line to find out when you need to make it. Now, if you're confused about your reservations, how they work, or it, when you can get them, ask your travel advisor. They are trained in this. They'll be able to help you and help you better understand when you can get a reservation for your cruise. If you do plan on trying a specialty restaurant and you need to make them as soon as possible because these do sell out fast. Back to the main dining room. So what if you just don't wanna to go to the main dining room that night? You wanna try something else, maybe one of these specialty restaurants, or you just wanna go do the buffet. What do you do if you have a scheduled dining time that you're supposed to be there? No worries. They're not gonna come and hunt you down and drag you back there, or they're not gonna say, oh, they didn't show up and then give your spot away for the rest of the cruise. No, you are perfectly fine. 
if you have a set dining time and you choose not to go, you do not have to go. If you have my time dining, you don't have to go that night if you don't want to. Go enjoy the buffet, go enjoy a specialty restaurant, go to some of the other included restaurants, you'll be just fine. If you're sailing on Princess Cruise Line anytime soon, well, they have just announced a new dining program that I wanted to touch on real quick. Princess Cruise Line has split their main dining room into three levels. So it's always had three levels up, but now they've changed it up to where one level is specifically for early and late dining. The second level is only for reservations, and the third level is only for the my time or free dining experience. So with that, in theory, what I'm hearing, and Princess has not come out and confirmed any of this yet because this is still really new. In theory, if you have scheduled dining and you miss your time, you should be able to come down to the My Time area and get in with no issues. Unlike some of the other cruise lines where you may have to, you know, please let me in and they may or may not do it, this one should accept scheduled dining into the my time dining if you choose to do a different time. Now that's yet to be determined. We're kind of hoping that that's the way that's going to go, but I'll let you know as soon as we hear from Princess. So there you have it. Whether you enjoy a set schedule, the flexibility to dine whenever you want, the spontaneity of showing up whenever you're just hungry, cruise lines have got you covered. I know that this can be a very confusing topic, but I really hope this video has helped you understand it a little bit better. If you're still confused or you need some help, contact your local travel advisor. Like I said, they're trained in this stuff and they will be able to help you out. They'll be glad to help you book your next cruise and walk you through all the steps. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on our next upcoming videos. Thanks again for watching and we will see you on the next adventure.